Hello everybody and welcome to the first round match between Andy ZZ and Ungern. Both teams start with getting an extra reroll. Um, human Mirror. Ungern won the toss and chose to kick, which I think is a bit surprising um, because of the heat. Now, I would have, I would have, what I would have done <laughs> is I, in heat, I like to receive just to just because I know I've got eleven players on offense. Um, whereas I think on defense, wow kill straight away so he exposed his guard catcher to be blitzed and he got blitzed and killed and that ball failed wow that's really brutal isn't it <laughs> um, so yeah when when the heat's a factor I would always receive because then I know it's I know it's 11 versus 11 and I'll just rely on on you know outplaying my opponent to score whereas you know because the natural the natural, you know, status quo, if you like, is both players score on their offense if they're, you know, reasonably, you know, balanced. But probably the likelihood is both teams will score on their offense and it'll be a one-one draw. So what I like to do is I would I would always receive, and then if if the Heat screws me on defense, he'd probably score anyway. If the Heat screws him on offense, then I might get a great chance to turn him over and win. And win. So I, I would always receive in heat. Ungern decides not to. You know that's fair. I, it's I'm not calling him wrong. Just pointing out, you know, my rationale for uh, for doing it. I've just realised I don't have the skills on, which is lucky that I saw that guard there. So mighty blow blitz. Both play. So both teams have got a mighty blow tackler. Both teams have gone for two re rolls. No, Ungern's gone for two re rolls and Apple. And a player, and a thirteenth player, and Z has gone for three re rolls, and an extra player. So neither went for twelve players. Both went for thirteen players, and they both did. They both facilitated this in a different way. Ungern with dropped a re roll for the reserve, and Andy Z um, dropped the apothecary for the reserve. I do prefer the twelve man team. That's just my preference. Um, Ungern's gone for more what I would have gone for, which is double spending the double on a catcher guard, guard on the ogre, um, a couple of blitzer guards and a mighty blow tackler. I think I would have just started with tackle and got an extra guard in as humans. I just think, you know, spamming guard would have been my play. So very close to what I would have taken. Um, Andy Z has gone for the more standard block on the ogre as you double, which, to be fair, in a lot of games has had a lot of value. Certainly not the wrong thing to do. Um, three guard blitzers, which is always good, isn't it? And then the mighty blow tackler as well. So yeah, I, I quite like this. Uh, you know, having some guys in front of the cage. I don't like it when people cage right up front. Um, maybe the cage doesn't need to be this tight, but you know, that's not bad, is it? I like the, I like the three dice blocks with the ogres. Um, you know, that's why I, that's why I don't value blocks so highly because I don't really want to be making two dice blocks with my ogres. My ogre is in a decision in a in a position to make a two dice block. I probably want to just not activate him, or well, maybe want to not activate him and keep him there. Obviously, in my game, I did make a two dice block with my tree man, and he instantly one in nine and fell over. Um, you know, but if you if you shouldn't do that, should you probably probably shouldn't do? You can if you're greedy. You know how I, I was greedy went for the block. But you don't have to be greedy and go for those blocks. Double skull there, so. It's going pretty bad for Ungern so far, isn't it? Really double sculling there, having his guard catcher killed and the apple failing. Not going very well for him. But then, by the same token, Andy Z has a bunch of guys on the ground and not much to protect the ball, has he? This is a tricky turn. I'm not, I'm not sure he should have got forward. Maybe he should have just tried to consolidate. He's down a guard guy from a, just a KO, but I don't like this very much because it means he's got to get the pow. Yeah, didn't re-roll it either. Yeah, I, didn't, I don't like that. You know, I, I I think you want to be blitzing for pushes, don't you? If you can positionally, like obviously if you've got a mighty blow guy, he can he can blitz a. 
a dodge guy to try and get removals and stuff. The, you know, there's attrition blitzers and there's a positional blitzers, isn't there? Attrition blitzers, you have to blitz. <laughs> if there's nothing to be really gained anywhere in particular, you're better off blitzing with a guy who has mighty blow. Um, otherwise, if there is a lot of position to be gained like this, you want to defend the ball. This was pretty, pretty bad. Haven't rely on the, on the power. As it happens, Ungern doesn't make a, an attempt at the ball, but he could have done. <laughs> and it's just generally bad, isn't it, to, to, to end up base like this? Now his cage is pretty collapsed. Three of the three of the players in it knocked down. Whereas if you had blitzed in such a way as for the push to be effective, you would have ended up none of these three guys in contact, and you would avoid if you would have avoided this stun and avoided this knockdown. And now that's not to say that he's made a mistake, but you know, just as a general guy, that's what you want to do, isn't it? You want, he, he would have been much better blitzing with this guy. And I know this is the movement, the strength two one, so he couldn't have got two dice in him. But if he could have blitzed from this direction. So a push here would have been good. That would have that would have been the way to have done that better. I'm not sure he could have done with the players he had available, the movement they had available. But in a perfect world, it would have been blitzing from here just for a push. And even more than unassailable. And you know there's no need for uh Ungern to go for the ball yet. Although you know he could potentially knock him over and then go for the ball on two dice. Like, I think he will. <laughs> I think I would, because you've got a two dice, and if you get a pow, you can go for the ball, so you might as well make this ball first. Um, but he, w he wouldn't have to, he could just he could just mighty blow tackle the uh, the catcher down and then focus what's in front of him. Uh, you know, he, he can still put a lot of pressure on without making a ball hit. From the position of this guard, I guess he's not hitting him. No, he could have hit him, and he, actually, even on a push, he could have just not followed, then moved the guard in, and then hit the ball. So he could he could have two diced the ball, but certainly, certainly didn't have to, and wasn't a mistake not hitting the ball. Um, he did get a cas though, a huge cas on the tackle mighty blow, and that is why I prefer the apple to a reserve. <laughs> Ah, I need to hit it this way, but only one dice. Oh, well. I don't really endorse that so much then, because he could have absolutely just two dice blocked this. This is a catcher. It push would have been good enough. Guard could have come in there, and then he could have two diced him. So, block saving the ogre there. So, yeah, that was that was a bit of a mistake from Ungern there, I think. But, you know, they've got three-minute turns, and they're under pressure, so it's not it's not a criticism. <laughs> It's an observation that maybe, maybe there was a better odds way of getting the ball. But I, I, I still don't think he had to go for the ball this turn because, you know, he can bring pressure and collapse him in and go for it the turn after. You don't always have to go for the ball when you can. Um, but yeah, maybe he could have done that better. You know, he could go for surfs here. But it doesn't work for them. Fair enough. Some people get a bit obsessed about surfs. Um, but you, you know, like obviously, they're situationally amazing because it's guaranteed removal, isn't it? That's the thing for the drive, it's basically a guaranteed KO. A lot of people also get upset when they surf somebody and don't injure them, but at the end of the day, it's so good because it's a guaranteed removal, isn't it? Not because you might hurt them, although you might. Gets the knockdown. And yeah, he, he just elected to put the lineman on the catcher, which is fair enough. Fails the pickup. So you know, attrition's pretty pretty close, really. Dead guard catcher versus man. It is two guarders. They're they really good positionals. The ones that the ones that Andy Z has lost. Or, or both guarders. Well, no, two or three guarders and his mighty blow tackle. So. He has lost some quality there. One dice is a mighty blow and gets cast. 
I mean, you know, you can't, you know, some people like to say, oh, one D's are skulls, and you shouldn't do anything risky, but, you know, he's up shit creek here, isn't he? He's got he's to try something, or just or just pass the turns and hope, hope, hope nothing bad happens, so you certainly can't bag on him for trying the one dice there, you know, trying for something. I'll back that 100%, trying to do things. But now it's starting to look bad, isn't it? Two cars, two KOs. And it's not just dice. I mean, I do think I do think Ungern has has you know positioned well and put him under a lot of pressure. You could say there were a lot of knockdowns, a lot of stuns, but uh, Andy Z was playing quite desperately with that cage sideline ish cage. And you know you got to give credit for Ungern for making him play a bit risky, regardless of the dice. You know. Just because, and you know, I'll, sometimes I'll say somebody was lucky, and it doesn't really take anything away from that person. It's just an observation, isn't it? There's plenty of people that could have the same dice as them and not win. It's not saying they only won because of the dice, but you know, in this case, I think Ungern has played better and has had better dice. Um, so it just is what it is, isn't it? Marginally better. I think the dice have been. Instrumental in his success. <laughs> Reroll. I mean, it was all good. Oh, excuse me. Sorry, I'm very tired. I've just been been uploading and recording all all day, every day. <laughs> it's pretty tough to cover all of the games live and do all of the replays, but I'm trying my best to bring it all, bring all of the World Cup to, to YouTube and Twitch. Um, so yeah, this is the thing, and because he's kind of des in desperation mode, he is getting more hits on him, isn't he, which is not helping his cause, but you can't expect him to give up and lie down, nor should he. Another KO from a both down. So yeah, it's looking pretty grim for Andy Z, isn't it? There, three KOs, two cards. He does have the two reserves. There's also uh, the heat <laughs> to contend with as well. Of course, the heat greatly favouring Andy Z, as he has three, six. Six players left, yeah, three KOs and two KOs. Whereas, so... Ungern has to roll ten two pluses, but he does have two reserves. So, it doesn't matter if he fails one of them. Um, he does get a three dice mighty blow, I always like to see that. Gets another three dice after as well. Another cast. <laughs> oh man. Three cast. So only five heat rolls. He could have made this three dice without a block. Um, I didn't catch whether he had a reroll or not. With a reroll, I would make that block. Without a reroll, I wouldn't. I mean, it would be crazy. He did have a reroll. So he could have made that block, I think. Um, he had a three dice, so that's what, 27 by 27. Pretty unlikely to fail. Um, unbelievable KO rolls. And then... <laughs> shafted by the heat as well. So he literally only had a roll, because he had two reserves. He only had to roll five two pluses, and he failed two of them. Meanwhile, um, Ungern had to make ten... <laughs> And pass them all. <laughs> so, on on pure diet, three KO fails, all of four plus, and then two out of two out of five heat failures. On pure dice, this has got to be one of the absolute worst. Anyone has been screwed by the dice. Um, 
But you know, it, it still it still doesn't mean Ungern doesn't deserve it. I do think he played better. He did turn him over when they had relatively equal player numbers. You know, and he had lost his guard catcher first. In fact, first turn he lost his guard catcher. Sh maybe shouldn't have exposed it though to a mighty go tackler. But uh, yeah, you know. So <laughs> it's unfortunate though for Andy Z, isn't it? I mean, no one, no one's doing anything with five players in the second half there. And maybe, maybe he could have played differently and not taken so many cars in the first half. But not really, you know. The, the the in the long term, good players will take less cas than than bad or new players, just because they get into more favourable blocking spots and what have you. Um, you know that they'll apply their guard better and and all this kind of stuff. And I mean, assuming the same races, of course. You know, a, a bad player with orcs is going to take less, or dwarves is going to take less cas than a, a good player with wood elves. But. That was a nice blitz, wasn't it? Only chance he had, only choice he had, and he, he went for it. Um, but, you know, comparing like for like, good players are going to take less cars than bad players just because, in the long run, because they position better and they get a better blocks for, blocks against total and more favourable blocking situations, all this kind of stuff, all, all adds up. So, But that's in the long term. In the short term, in the World Cup, the Kaz dice are pretty much just dice. Uh, there is the the targets are down to choices, aren't they? Like Ungern did give the hit on his on his catcher, which he could have protected him. But the sheer volume of removals here, <laughs> it's just it's just dice. There's, there's nothing to be done. Just one of those games. Unlucky for Andy Z for it to happen in the World Cup. Um, yeah, pretty much nothing anyone could do from this point, certainly. You know, it's only 1-0. It, it, you know, you could try, you could try sage-like desperation moves, but it's really, it's really asking a lot. <laughs> This would be insanely, insanely low odds to even do anything here. He goes for it though. You know. He uses a reroll as well. At least he went for it. But now he's got guard around the ball and there's really no coming back now at all. Shame shame that the game's over on turn 11 isn't it? <laughs> what can you do? That is brutal. I unfortunately don't have a monologue prepared for these last five turns. Um, <laughs> Chelsea Zola was 2-0 down on turn 12 and just skipped turns with, with more or less a full team you know? yeah. I'm not criticising him, it's his time you know, if he doesn't want to spend it trying to battle back from a ridiculously lost position it's fair enough, he did have the smallest chance to come back I don't think Andy Z has any realistic chance to come back here but you know, he's fighting for it so good for him I don't think anyone would hold it against him if he just if he just passed turns till the end of the match here. Absolutely not. But you know he's in he's in the World Cup. It's I think in the World Cup it's okay to pass turns when it's lost and it's also okay to to fight to give yourself this tiniest chance. I personally would always fight to the death to give myself the tiniest chance. But I certainly don't hold it against Chelsea's all of it, he didn't. Um But it's certainly would be would make the end of this video a bit less boring if he had considered. <laughs> no, it's fair enough. I think I think it is a shame that people can get blasted out of the game by the dice like this. Like I mean, it's blood ball. I just think it's a bit unfortunate in the World Cup. I think I think it would have maybe been better to have only had thirty two people in the World Cup, and then uh, you know had a group stage and stuff like the actual real. 
the real football World Cup or soccer if you're American. Um, you know, if they'd done it like that with a group stage, so everybody who qualified would have got three games, because for the people who were serious about it, it was a big commitment to try to qualify, you know? Maybe, maybe some people qualified from the World Cup just because they entered one of the leagues, no real aspirations of qualifying. And then there were some people who, like, entered eight qualifiers and played Champs Ladder to try to qualify, you know? So all this effort to qualify, and, you know, it, I'm not saying... Andy Z was one of those people, but some people will have put in a, a pretty big effort to try to qualify, and then just only get one game, and it's like this. <laughs> you know? He goes for it. <laughs> he got the ball out. <laughs> wow, wow. You know, so he really could get four turns of failing pickups. It's possible. You know, and if it did, and he got all four, all five KOs back, two heat. That's seven, eight, nine. He would have had ten players, and he could have he could have actually come back into it. Um, oh no, he couldn't have because he would have just he would have just stopped the score. <laughs> he would just lose one nil. Okay, <laughs> disregard my last statement. It is still completely done, despite the fact he got the ball loose. But if that had been a power and he'd killed him, and then he picked up the ball, and then he'd survived three dice, and then this catcher had run down, <laughs> it could have it could have worked out for him. But. Yeah. Yeah, this one really was over. And it was just the dice. It's probably this is probably the hardest anyone's been diced. I would say three cars, three kill and, and the two heat as well. Um at least he got to play a half though. <laughs> at least he got to play a half. Uh there was there was some play but the, the second half was absolute massacre, wasn't it? But if he had scored in his arm, like, you know, to be fair, to be fair, he got a bit of a crack at it. If he'd, if he'd played better in the first half, you know, maybe, maybe he could have played better. You know, it's arguable whether he could have done or not, but maybe he could have played better in the first half. And if he'd got his score in the first half, then um, he could have just laid down in the second and maybe come back with some players. And he could maybe, he could maybe have won it actually in overtime. So... You know, he did get to play for a few turns. He started off with the cars. So there was some... There was something going for him at some point, at least. At least he got some enjoyment for it. Because uh, there was one game in particular <laughs> where the game was over turn one and it wasn't pretty much turn one. Turn, well, not really turn one. Turn three or four, it was over. And it was nothing... Nothing the, the coach could have done about it. Not Nothing anybody on earth could have done about it. It was pretty much over in turn three. And uh, yeah, this this took longer to be over than that, but the dice were still horribly, horribly one. I mean, this is ridiculous, isn't it? Three kills I didn't recover. Now he's got five total. Three cars. The two heap was just outrageous, and it was the guard blitzer as well. But um, you know, who knows? Maybe, maybe he could have scored in the first half. Maybe he could have positioned differently in the first half. And giving himself a better chance of scoring then. Maybe. I'm obviously not criticising him. <laughs> and, you know, Ungern did what he had to do, didn't he? Fair enough. And not taking anything away from him to say he was luckier because you just need to look at this to see who was luckier. <laughs> You've got to be pretty big headed to say this kind of result is that is just purely the result of your superior play, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> some people would some people would claim that all of their wins are skill and all of their losses are dice but um, you may well have outskilled your opponent in this game but you can't deny you've had the better dice when this has happened to somebody <laughs> oh, I've got so much time to fill this half it's it's almost time for <laughs> talk about Blood Bowl, uh, Blood Bowl AI and what would happen if Magnus Carlsen played Blood Bowl. These <laughs> would be interesting though, wouldn't it, if Magnus Carlsen played Blood Bowl? How much better would he be than everybody else? Obviously he'd be the best, but how much would the dice prohibit him from being completely and utterly dominant? It would be interesting, wouldn't it? I think. That's what I say on every stream nearly.
<laughs> and and wouldn't it be interesting if there was a perfect AI that would make perfect decisions every turn? Mathematically, you know, mathematically optimal moves. Because I don't think people, you know, human people who play Blood Bowl make optimal moves. Probably hardly ever, do they? I mean, <laughs> there'll be the occasional one that, if, if you even can define it, you know? Because there's so many... There's so many different things that can happen after each move, isn't there? That uh, it's not, you know, people simplify it and say Blood Bowl's about rolling dice and making your opponent roll dice and stuff, but there's a lot more to it than that. You know, making your opponent roll a 2 plus isn't as good as rolling a 2 plus yourself, is it? <laughs> wow, a random death there to make it look look closer than it was. And he doesn't play the last turn. So, look, fair fair play to uh, Andy Z. He really, he really did, he really did, did keep going for it, didn't he? Um, despite being completely lost due to the Kaz dice um, and the and the heat dice. But you know, congrats to Un Unger and can't say he didn't deserve it. I think he did play marginally better when when the teams were still teams. <laughs> But there you go. Pretty brutal human mirror there for you. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic.